Dental, yes, that's properly from 200 level. However, there are some schools that have been introduced to their technical courses from 100 level second semester. Maybe out of the three courses, the person failed one. That's when the students have a receipt. But now, when you resume 400 level, you start with an introduction into pathology and pharmacology. That the comprehensive exam is to cut off, to reduce the number of medical students admitted for that class. Hi everyone, my name is Olachide Damilola Fibi, a 400 level student in a Nigerian medical school. Now, okay, I'm going to be talking about a few things now and I have some pen down questions with me here. And I have here is number of levels in medical school. Yeah, basically we have 100 level to 600 level. The medical school program runs for six years, 100 level to 600 level. Three years, the first three years is supposed to be for the preclinicals, while the um, last three years is for the clinical levels. So we have six levels in medical school. Now, talk about 100 level and the courses they take. Now, this 100 level stuff, eh, it varies for different universities, but I think basically 100 level students get to do the normal CH, GNS, chemistry, that's CHM, whatever. Every course have their course code. That's what 100 level um, course is all about. But there are some schools that when they get to their second semester in 100 level, they are being introduced to basic clinical courses like the preclinical courses that we're going to be doing in med school. There are some schools that from their 100 level um, second semester, they have been introduced to that. But the school I attend, our 100 level, we do MTA, GNS, chemistry, biology, physics for both, for both first semester and second semester. Mind you, I said earlier that there are some schools that from their second semester, they have been introduced to basic medical courses. That's the physiology, anatomy, biochemistry. Now, the cutoff for going to 200 level. Now, this also varies for different universities. Now, for my school, the school I attend, the criteria for you to be able to cross to 200 level is if you do not fail any course in your 100 level courses, the physics, mathematics, chemistry, biology, must not fail anyone. So that's the criteria to cross to 200 level in my school. And that's, I think it applies for most of the medical schools in Nigeria. So at the end of 200 level, there are some schools in Nigeria that take an exam called comprehensive exam. It's not common in all schools, but there are some schools that take an exam um, called the comprehensive exam. And this exam is to test their um, knowledge level, the people that the school think can continue in the medical program, and also a way to cut off SSs. Let me use the word SSs because some medical school get to admit so many students and maybe from their, their accreditation they have in the school, they can't graduate that number of students that they admit. So that the comprehensive exam is to cut off, to reduce the number of medical students admitted for that class. That's what that, the essence of that comprehensive exam is also. And also it's a way of making, infusing the seriousness in medical school. You no, know, we are just coming into med medical school properly in 200 level. So it's a way of infusing the seriousness that there's an exam to test your knowledge or to test your ability to be able to carry on in the medical program. Oh. Talk about the preclinical years and the courses. Now, preclinical years start properly from 200 level. However, there are some schools that have been introduced to their preclinical courses from 100 level second semester. But properly and generally, preclinical years start from the 200 level. And that's when we, um, we get to do courses like anatomy. Anatomy is divided into the gross parts and the histology and the embryology part. So we have gross anatomy, we have histology, we have embryology. The three of them is anatomy generally. Then we have the physiology and we have the biochemistry. Now, for each of these courses, at the end of each part, now this is how we do it in medical school, at the end of each part of these courses, we get to write an exam called in courses. Now, generally in medical school, we have three or four major professional exams. And these exams, like three in some universities and four in some universities. In at the end of each system study, we get to write an exam called in course exam. So this exam all together add up to our CA continuous assessment for the major professional exam. So like I said, 
Some schools do three professional exams, some schools do four professional exams. For my school, we do four, and that's MBBS Part 1, Part 2, Part 3, and Part 4. Now, MBBS Part 1 is the one you write at the preclinical level, and that's what determines whether that student would be able to cross over to the clinical level. I remember then, our first in-course then in the preclinical was the lower limb in anatomy, lower limb in course. We all read, like, oh, that's our first medical school in course. And when the in course result was, was pasted, <laughs> there's something called the Duncan line in my school. Duncan line is a line that demarcates those that pass the exam from those that didn't meet up to 50 because 50 is the cut, uh, cut of mark in medical school exams. So the Duncan line was drawn and you know that when you get to the scoreboard, you will first be looking at, looking for your name at the, above the Duncan line level. Then if you can't find your name there, you come below and come and find your fate there. So that's how it is. As each system we do in medical school, we get to write an exam called in-course exam. And this exam adopts to the CA, continuous assessment for the major exam that is going to be written now let me talk about the major exam mbbs part one i'm going to be talking about mbbs part one exam and like i mentioned earlier mbbs part one exam is written at the preclinical level and this is what determines whether the student is going to cross over whether the students are certified the examiners to cross over to the clinical level mbbs part one exam is divided into three parts we have the mcq and um, theory parts we have the practical part and we have the orals and that's the viva vc i'll talk about the mcq and the theory part is usually the first exam we do most times the exams we write in, in medical school aside the theory is the mcq exams that's the common examining so you have to be sure of each option you have to know whether this is true or this is wrong not just pick one although there are some exams that you get right objective also in medical school so now to the mbbs mbbs is strictly mcq and theory now the mcq and theory is what we write the first week of the exam now the practical is what is written after one has written the old MCQ and theory. The practical exam sets in where you go to the lab and you are being tested from all the practicals you've done in medical school so far at the preclinical levels. Then the Viva Vosé. Viva Vosé now is when they get to invite external examiners. External examiners, they are not your regular lecturers. They are not the regular people you get to see during lecture times in your school. These ones are from other universities and they are, um, your school would invite them over and they are going to test you. It's going to be like a one-on-one -on -one exam. So you're going to test your knowledge to know that, oh yes, this student should really go over to the next class, that's to the, to the clinical levels, or no, I think the student has to remain. So that's what the Viva exam is all about. And if you are a decision candidate, the Viva exam would also authenticate getting your decision for you because if you are close to decision, the Viva versus mark is actually lead to, I think, five marks to, to add up to what you've written in your MCQ theory and your practicals. So just imagine you are very close to decision. You had like 69 put together your MCQ theory and practical has been added up and you had like 68, 69. Now you see your Viva Vosé can actually determine whether you would become a distinction student. You get a distinction for that exam or you remain at the level of your 68, 69. Meanwhile, some schools, 70 is like the decision pass mark. Why some schools it is 75? So depend on the peculiarity of your school. Is it that 70 or 75 that you get that would either make you a distinction student or more? And there is something again called the receipt. So if you're able to make up to 50 in, like I said, 50 is the cut of mark, it's the pass mark in medical school exam. Now 50 to you might seem like, ah, 50, is it 50 that I cannot get? See, it is where you come inside medical school, where you get into medical school and you start the program properly. That is where you understand that. <laughs> Getting 50 in medical school requires work, actually. It is not just something that you just use your eye and just eyes, you know something. If you don't work, so now there's something called the receipt exam. The receipt exam is if you don't make up to 50%, um, you would have to come back like three months, say three months, or depending on the peculiarity of your school. But basically on an average, three months is when you get to come back to write the receipt exam. Then if you pass the receipt exam, you are now allowed to join the other students who has crossed over. And if 
such student does not pass the receipt exam, the student would have to repeat that class. For one to have a receipt is that the person failed one. Maybe out of the three courses, the person failed one. That's when the students have a receipt. But if two courses, then the students have to repeat, not receipt. But to have a receipt is to fill one of the courses offered at the technical levels. Guys, I'm Kenji Opakuni and I'm a 400 level student of a medical school in Nigeria. Hi guys, I'm Baluma Kwemi Mohamed, a 500 level medical student. I'm here to talk about the overview of the clinical years. The clinical years is from 400 level to 600 level and each level has the um, cause of focus for each level which after you are done you write the professional exams under each level. For 400 level, 400 level is for 18 months, that's for my school and most medical schools in Nigeria actually. But each school has their own peculiarities on how they want their um, course of study to go. For most universities, it's six months for 400 level, and um, 500 level is about six to eight months, and 600 level is about 10 to 12 months, which is a year. So I'll be taking over from my colleague about the various postings that will be done throughout the clinical years, that is, like you said, from the 400 level to the 600 level, that medical students will be participating in or going through for the clinical years, that is from 400 level down to 600 level. So the various postings are the pathology and pharmacology posting, the pathology which is broken down into four different courses. We have the hematology, histopathology, the medical microbiology, and the chemical pathology. Then we have the medicine and surgery. We have the obstetric and gynecology and pediatrics posting. We also have the community medicine posting. Then we also have the special postings, which include in our school we have anesthesia, we have radiology, we have ophthalmology, then we have ENT, the ear, nose, and throat. Depending on which medical school you find yourself in, this will differ. Then we also have psychiatry postings. For 400 level, um, my colleague said about the preclinicals, it's a must you pass your preclinicals either after being after you've cleared your receipt exam or after you just wrote the exam once and you passed for you to be able to move to 400 level. That's at the beginning of the clinical years. And in most medical school, 400 level is majorly pathology and pharmacology. In my own school, it's majorly pathology and pharmacology, even though we do other postings too in 400 level, but it all varies per school. It depends on the mood your school adopts. But in most medical schools, 400 level is pathology and pharmacology. Now, when you resume 400 level, you start with an introduction into pathology and pharmacology. Now, you you will be taking an introductory class on every um, unit in pathology, which is the study of disease. So you know disease entities in um, histopathology, you know disease entities in hematology, microbiology, how microorganism causes disease and all. Then you know about um, chemical pathologies and that's all the disorders of chemicals in the systems and all. Then you know about pharmacology too introduction to pharmacology, basic things in pharma pharmacology, which you build other things on, so on pharmacology, you know. So, so after that, in my own school, we also do introduction in other postings to like, you do medicine and surgery one, which is an introduction post, posting into medicine and surgery. We have the junior um, pediatrics and junior obstetrics and gynecology posting. We also have the community medicine one posting, and we also have then after you finish the community medicine one person, you proceed to block one pathology and pharmacology, which you do some other things in, some other aspects in pathology and pharmacology. Then after which you are done, you proceed to do a class in medicine two and surgery two. Then after which you come back and do a block posting in block two pathology and pharmacology and after which you are done you write a, your professional exam so on pathology and pharmacology which, are, which also consists of the MCQ part, the theory part, the, the viva part and also practicals and I don't need to go much into that. Dami has already talked about what it's about. Provided you pass your MB2 which is the promotional exam from 400 level into 500 level 
So at the start of 500 level, you begin some new postings. You'll be having community medicine too, which you've done community medicine one in 400. I'm talk remember, I'm talking based on our own mode, the way the medical school year is being run. Then you also have um, your senior ONG, which is the obstetrics and gynecology and pediatrics posting in this 500 level. After you write your MBBS three exams, which is mainly on um, ONG and pediatrics. Then moving on after the exams, the MBBS part three, which is the promotional exam to 600 level. 600 level, you will be taking some postings, which includes the special posting on psychiatry, then medicine three and surgery three, then community medicine three. After all this, you'll be writing your final MBBS exam, which is MBBS part four. Then you become a doctor. Then you become a doctor. After you pass, ah, then you doctor. become a doctor. <laughs> Become a doctor. Provided right you pass. <laughs> and you become a doctor in Nigeria. Hi guys. Hello. 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 Is it the same thing? I'll be comrade. Hello. Oh, yeah. Debbie. Okay. Beautiful people. Where is it? Where is it? Hey, there, your head is not your face. Your face is not your face. Okay. Keep on. Your head your head. So now we're on the set, we're done, we're done. <laughs> you stop with my boss alone, are you fucking stupid? <laughs> we are done. Can thank you. Speech, you guys, thank you so much. Subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed the video. You guys, thank you so much. I love you.